Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of me testing out a new camera. I mean, new to me, not that new technically. Uh, to be honest, I don't even know at this point what I'm expecting or looking for in a camera. I am just sort of hoping that I'll have this spiritual connection with one at some point while using it. These all do the same thing. I mean, there's no camera really being made these days uh, from the top, you know, camera manufacturers that's not perfectly capable of incredible results, regardless of your style and taste. But with that said, I had rented this camera to shoot a project for work, so I figured while I had access to it a few days before that shoot, why not get some reps in and become comfortable with it before taking it into a high stakes situation. This camera was of course the Sony a7R5, a technical masterpiece on paper, and I'll share my thoughts on how I think that translates into real world use. But first, to test this thing out, I actually wanted to see how this felt as a one camera for everything setup. For those of you who have seen my X-T5 video, that probably sounds familiar. So yeah, one camera body and one lens, which this time was the 24 to 70 uh, 2.8 GM Mark II from Sony. And with this combo, I shot all of the video uh, and photos on this outing. All of the video was shot in S-Log3, uh, and the photos were shot in RAW and edited in Lightroom to my tastes. Uh, I did actually use my Tiffin Black Pro Mist filter for both photo and video this time, uh, just the 1 8 strength, which is uh, like the most subtle option. I don't normally do this, but I wanted to soften up and maybe even make the Sony lens a little less clinically sharp, uh, which maybe sounds silly to some of you, but I think it worked out uh, as I intended. It ended up being a really fun day. We saw the first bit of fall color arriving, had some nice morning light, and even stumbled upon a few unexpected gems throughout the day. To kick things off, we woke up early and drove north towards some small towns in eastern Washington. Right as we pulled into town, the light was getting pretty nice. So we got out and walked around for a while and I was just documenting sort of whatever caught my eye. I was immediately drawn to this area with a mechanic in a used car lot. There were tons of interesting vehicles and it just screamed small town America to me. All the shops and side streets were empty, so I was able to slow down and enjoy shooting some of these little details that I found beautiful. The second stop was Colville, a bit farther north. We started by grabbing a coffee and a surprisingly delicious breakfast sandwich that had like a pretzel bagel bun, so good. But uh, with our hearts and bellies both full, we spent some time walking around the town and wondering to ourselves what it would be like to live in a place like this. I didn't get a ton of photos here, but I did snag a couple. My favorite being this one of the Chevelle with a little square of light shining through and the leaves all over the curb. A simple frame for sure, but I love the color palette here and the feeling of nostalgia for this time of year that this image gives me. Huh. 
The next spot was unexpected but incredible. Not necessarily for photography, but for Carl, it was an absolute blast. Uh, <laughs> a white sand beach to ourselves right along the river. Such a nice surprise. We let him run around and uh, he enjoyed himself for a while while we enjoyed the scenery. This was sort of the start of this transition to strong midday light that wasn't ideal uh, for shooting in this location. I think coming back here in the evening, like just before sunset, golden hour time, would be a much better time for photos. Uh, as we were on the east side of the river, uh, looking west over the water and towards the mountains. So noted for another time. We continued our drive following the river south for quite a while, stopping now and again at different clearings to enjoy the views. It was just beautiful through this stretch and finally we came across this place and Jillian would not leave this spot without trekking all the way down this super steep sand dune. She really wanted to get down to the water and I can't deny it was a nice spot once he got down there. I didn't want to bring the Sony setup down there though, uh, it's just a bit like heavy and cumbersome to carry in a situation like that, especially with the zoom lens. So I grabbed my X100V that Jillian was actually using that day and slid my way down uh, this sand dune <laughs> all the way to the beach and um, you know enjoyed a little bit of just casual photography from there. it was back to the Sony and back on the road. Go ahead and pull in here. Uh, that is a crazy scene. I'm going to figure out where I can shoot that from with that tree in the foreground. Did you see that thing? No. It's like a huge... I've just got to figure out... tree? <laughs> this church. I figure out where I can go. Where I won't be in the shot. Good question. I think I can just pull off over here. Real quick. I tried a few compositions here, but I think the best one was this last one. Uh, switch to landscape orientation and try to get more of the tree um, sort of arcing over the scene. And I really am pretty happy with it. Hunters was about two blocks total, <laughs> but I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I spent most of the time on this road in front of uh, this abandoned service station, which was full of interesting things, including like old vehicles being engulfed by these plants growing up through them and around them. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a really fun little scene to shoot.
on our way out of that town, I pulled over one last time, uh, it's my last stop of the day, to shoot this really cool series of buildings that were out in the valley. Uh, this scene was a great representation to me, at least since my time living out here, uh, of Eastern Washington, sort of like in a nutshell. So let's talk about this camera. It is an impressive piece of gear, uh, both on the photo and the video side of things. The image quality was absolutely fantastic. Um, the 61 megapixel sensor really resolves a ton of detail, more than you would need for really any application. So you can crop to your heart's desire, which is great. The autofocus was perfect, no complaints there, which honestly doesn't come as much of a surprise at all. It is arguably like the strongest advantage of the Sony system over others, in my opinion. Uh, that and the lens selection and like adaptability of lenses. Um, those are like the key things in my opinion. I do love the idea of the screen and all the ways it can be tilted and rotated. However, I'm actually one of those weird ones who prefers the simple design of like a two-way tilt screen that you'd find on the X-T5 or the GFX100. I still think that's the best solution for a pro body while maintaining uh, shooting like a portrait orientation or just for anyone who isn't shooting selfies or, or vlogging or you know taking any photos of themselves on a camera. I think it's just the best solution. But other than that, there's really not a whole lot to say here. It's just great. Just like every other camera is great these days. It's all really about what things matter to you the most and choosing the system that fits your needs the best. If your work requires the absolute best autofocusing system, um, like ever, <laughs> paired with an incredible image sensor and resolution, then this camera is for you. It truly is. The 4K video in 24 frames per second in S-Log3 is actually really quite good, making this camera a very usable hybrid solution as long as you don't need any crazy low light or slow motion capabilities. I don't care about 8K, so I didn't even bother with it, but I've heard it's plagued by terrible rolling shutter performance anyways. Um, and finally, I'll just go ahead and say it, the colors are perfectly fine. I know there's this big argument that Sony colors are somehow worse than other brands, uh, and I think that's really only a topic to even concern yourself with when you're shooting JPEGs or straight out of camera images. The raw files are flexible, like 100% flexible. You can pull the color in any direction you want, and the files hold up really, really well, even to like heavy color grading. So will I get one? Probably not, I don't know, maybe. I, I didn't have that magical, like spiritual moment or connection that I've been looking for using a digital camera yet. So I don't think my search is over. Uh, maybe it will never be and that's okay. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video uh, or at least found it entertaining or informative. If you enjoyed it, it really does help me out when you hit the like button, you comment, uh, and subscribe to the channel. I've got many more videos on the way. Feel free to leave any questions that you might have in the comments and I'll try my best to get back to each and every one of you. Uh, thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one.